What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Of course, this is TW Motorsports and today we are going to be knocking the rear end out of the Silverado. Now, the downside is I hate working in the grass. I like working outside, but I don't like working in the grass, but this is the best option because it's going to take me a couple days. So it's not going to be like an in and out situation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this rear end out. We're going to put it in the green truck, but then I'm going to put the green truck one back in here. So this is at least mobile and I can roll it around. So this is what I have to work with because I don't want to leave it setting up top in the front of the house it looks really really trashy without the door and all but anyway what I'm gonna be doing is the very first thing I'm gonna take loose is the drive shaft there so 11 millimeters is what takes those bolts out and then you're probably gonna to have to use a pry bar to pry that thing forward especially on uh, this one because it looks like it's pretty rusty once we get that um, it's really not that bad of a process the after I get that before I drop the rear end down it'll be pretty easy on this truck because the leaf springs on the bottom on my green truck because it's got a flip kit it'll be a little bit harder but it's still we're still going to do it anyway once we do that we're going to get the e-brake lines loose because it's going to be a pain to get the e-brake lines loose with the with the rear end up or down and moving around and whatnot so i'm going to get those loose next once we do that then we'll move on to maybe the u-bolts and some of the bracketry that holds this thing i also have to undo the brake line and i've got some caps to cap it off so it doesn't just drain out everything that's in it and um, then what we will do is, like I said, this will probably take me a course of a couple days. I'm gonna scrub this thing down, knock all the rust off of it, give it a nice new coat of paint. We're also gonna drain the fluid out. So I'll bring you guys along this whole process. But for now, let's go ahead and get the drive shaft out. So now the drive shaft is out. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna un unhook the e-brake lines right here. To me, that's the easiest spot. Um, you can undo them on the back side of the wheel but it's a little bit of a cumbersome job. And um, so I'm gonna release the, some pressure on this line and then we're gonna go ahead and just pull these two guys out and thread this stuff back in the back. Um, if I decide to reuse, I th actually think these are the same, but if they are not, I'll take the ones off of my green truck and uh, we'll just replace it. But anyway, I'm gonna get those out of the way and then we'll move on to taking some, probably the brake line loose next. So I got the e-brake lines out and what you do is, I don't know if you guys can see this, you have to pinch these little tabs in and then pull it back. So now that I've got that, there's two 13 millimeter brackets um, that hold that in place. I'm gonna go ahead and take those out so I'm not trying to thread that out while I'm pulling the rear end back. So I'm gonna take the two 13s out, go ahead and thread those off, throw them in the bed of the truck for now and then we'll move on to the brake line. So normally, if you were gonna leave the brake lines, you would need to go ahead and loosen the brackets that hold, or, or the um, e-brake line anyway. You need to loosen the brackets, but because we're gonna be taking them all with the rear end, we are good. So we're gonna move on to the um, brake line. So the brake line that actually has fluid in it comes off of a T and comes to the middle right here. That's what this guy is. And so we're going to loosen that up, and it is a 9 16 Now, once you get this loose, um, you can go ahead and pop there's a little tab in the center you can push out with a screwdriver and uh, or kind of pry it out of the way and then that piece here will be loose so we'll have it completely done and I am going to cap that line off like I said I've got some caps over here I've got some random caps that we're going to put in place just to keep that from running all over the place now it's still going to run but um, as long as you don't press on the pedal, it shouldn't push out. So once we get that complete, then we can actually start taking the rear end loose itself. So you can see now I went ahead and got the brake line loose and I put a cap on that, just a rubber cap. So now we're gonna move on to the shocks. Now these are 21 millimeter and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take these out on both sides. And then the very last step should be, I think we're gonna, well, I say the last step, I'm gonna unplug there's a vent that goes to the front of this axle and it goes up towards the gas tank. So I'm not gonna reach up at the gas tank and disconnect it, but I am gonna disconnect it on the rear end because I'll be able to reuse the one on my truck, my green truck. So I am gonna disconnect that and then we will loosen up our U-bolts. So now that we have both shocks loose, and I went ahead and put the bolt back in the bottom of them. This is the vent that I'm talking about and that just pulls off supposed to I'm gonna get a pair of pliers and twist it around but there's supposed to be a clip that holds it up here and it's already broken so that's what I'm unhooking here is just the vent tube so as you can see I went ahead and took the 21 millimeters out that hold the u-bolt in the u-bolt and the bottom plate is completely gone now I just need to do the other side a lot of times guys it'll stay in place until you get the other side loose so just be careful don't be under it when it's coming down 
And then what we're going to attempt to do, I left the wheels on for a reason, I'm going to try to roll it backwards. Now we have both of the sets of U-bolts out and the rear end is still in place, but it's because I've got it supported with the jack. So my plan is to lift it up as high as I can to give me room to roll it out of the back. So here's what we got so far. Um, I can't get the rear end up enough or the truck up enough in order to roll the rear end out like I was hoping. So I've got a couple options. My neighbor has a tractor and I can have him come over here, lift it up, roll it out from under it. That's probably the easiest way. Now the other option and what I'm thinking I may do since he doesn't, I don't think he's home right now, is I can take the wheels off and then just kind of scoot it back uh, just a little bit at a time. So that may be the option I go with just because I don't think he's here. And um, well, the whole point of this guys is to show you that you can do this without a ton of tools and some of you may not have a tractor. So uh, if it were on concrete, I could just lift the thing up, but it's just wanting to sway. and I don't have a ton of good support for the jack stands anyway. So I've, that's why I've got those uh, race ramps or these stands that I made underneath there because I didn't want it to fall. So I think that's what I'll end up doing. I think I'll go ahead and take the wheels off and we'll just scoot the thing back out from under it. I can always jack it back up and put the wheels back on. So now you see I've got the wheels off and I'm just gonna walk it a little bit here, a little bit on the other side until it's out from under the truck. And then we'll put the wheels back on it. Like I said, um, you know, it can be done with little to no tools, but it sure would have been easier to use a tractor that way I didn't have to take the wheels off. Anyway, we're gonna get it out and then we're gonna start the cleanup process. So we've got this thing up here in my upstairs garage. Now I'm ready to clean it. I already power washed it off. I did that off camera and got all the mud and stuff off of it, but I also wanna scuff it up before I start to paint it. So before I do that, I am gonna go ahead and take the brake or the e-brake lines off. I'm just gonna pull those out. And then there's a couple, I think those are 13 millimeter brackets that hold them in these two places. Get those out of the way. It's just less I have to mess with and go around. And then I'm gonna grab my drill and a uh, wire wheel and we're gonna go to town on cleaning this thing up So as you can see I went ahead and got the all the brake lines or the e-brake lines I keep saying brake lines all the brake e-brake lines off and uh, They just push out you just have to push these pieces together similar to how we took them out of the truck But now I'm just gonna use a scuff wheel on my drill and I'm just gonna go over this entire thing now It's not that imperative that I get it like spotless, but what I'm trying to knock off you can see these chunks of rust um, where the old paint has kind of, you know, given way. And so this is going to be messy. That's the downside. But the cool thing is I've got it set up here on a jack stand. I'm going to be able to rotate it over and get the bottom side, the back, all these areas. I'm going to try to keep away from these areas here because obviously I don't want to get into my brake lines or mess them up. Same thing here. So I'm not going to get real aggressive in those areas because the paint that I'm going to be using guys is not, um, it's pretty forgiving. So, and we'll talk about that when we get to that section, but I'll go through this. I won't show you guys this in a time lapse like normal. I'm just going to scuff it up and uh, chances are you may not even be able to see the difference. Now, one thing I did do, I did plug the rear end. Uh, it still has fluid in it. I'm going to drain that after we paint. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and knock all this crap off. So after going over it at least one time all over with the drill brush, uh, you can see a lot of these areas got pretty clean, but there's still some areas that I'd like to get into. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to a Scotch-Brite pad, just a red Scotch-Brite, and I'm gonna go over it at least one more time before I try to wipe it down and then we get into paint. So uh, this, sec this part right here with just the drill brush took me about, I don't know, 30 minutes. And like I said, it didn't take all of it off. Where I could hold down, you could see the areas that are kind of shiny those areas right there um, the drill brush did really well but on the areas like you know where you can't get into here that is the areas that i'm going to be focusing on with the scotch bright at this point i've went over it with the scotch bright pad the red scotch bright and uh, it's looking a little better i knocked some other high spots down and got into some spots where i couldn't get before but now i'm going to take my 3m adhesive remover just because i don't have any lacquer thinner and just some shop towels i'm going to start wiping it down now after i wipe it down I'm gonna use my blower and blow it off and then I'm gonna go over it one more time with a microfiber uh, because these shop towels sometimes leave some residue behind. So I'll do that and then we will be ready to start coating it. So at this point, I've got it as clean as I'm gonna get it and now we are going to apply this. And what is this? POR15, guys. I've used this in the past with great results. I am gonna dump it into another container 
and then when you put the lid back on it's very very important guys that you put something in between it and the lid otherwise you'll never get it off so i got a piece of wax paper here that i'm going to put in between it but you want to wear gloves if you get this on anything it literally has to wear off there is no wiping it off and nothing really breaks it down so i'm going to be using a foam brush i've got like four or five foam brushes a lot of times this stuff just destroys a foam brush so i bought a pack of like six and uh, to me that's the easiest way to apply it now we're probably going to do two coats and i might time lapse some of this so you guys can see what it looks like going on At this point, we've got one coat on the entire thing, and um, well, it's looking pretty good, guys. It definitely looks a lot better than what it did. Now, I am going to be doing something in the center here later in the video, so I did not paint that area. I am going to, however, go over it one more time. I see some areas that I missed now that I've rolled it back into the garage, but um, I won't show you guys any of that. Basically, the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna take that rear cover off and get the fluid drained out. Now that we have the second coat on here, I am going to go ahead and take the 13 millimeter bolts out. So there should be 10 of them and we'll take those out, get this out of the way. You may have to pry on this a little bit. Uh, most of the time you don't, but if you do have to pry on it, just be real careful. Obviously you don't want to scratch up your new paint, but I'm going to go ahead and do that, let it drain out. And then we'll talk about the next step, which is putting the new cover in place. So this has been draining for a little bit at this point, and um, I'm gonna let it keep draining a little bit more, but we're gonna have to go back and clean off the gasket, the old gasket material, and I've got my new oil here, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But before we get, um, I'm gonna let this drain probably another, I keep tilting it up a little bit, letting it drain a little more and more, but the gears look great on this thing. Um, no wear, looks like really even wear pattern, so I'm pretty impressed with uh, this, you know, that truck has 160,000 miles, but these things are pretty tough to be honest with you. Sometimes the differential goes out in them, but um, for what I'm doing, I'm not going to be launching this thing at the track or anything. I think it'll be fine. And the black paint really turned out really, really good. Uh, but now we need to move on to taking the rear end out of that truck. Now I'm not going to show you that. It's pretty much the same process. Now I do have a few other things I have to unhook because this thing has helper bags in the back. Um, so I'm gonna have to unhook those and then the leaf pack is on the bottom So what I'm gonna do on this truck is I'm gonna loosen up um, the leaf in the back and Then I will drop it down and we'll kind of pull it out the back. So I won't show you guys that process um, Basically the next thing we're gonna do though after this one's out is we will talk about um, or I'll show you guys what I'm gonna use to clean up the gasket on that and The diff cover that I've got and I'll show you that here in just a minute I have the old rear end out and um, obviously we need to do some swapping so I'm not going to put the single piston uh, brake calipers underneath this truck so I'm gonna have to swap the calipers over but before we do that um, I'll just do that one at a time and you guys probably don't need to see that since I showed you the whole brake swap video what I am going to do though is I'm gonna go get a razor blade and I've got some brake clean here in this box. We're gonna use some brake clean and a razor blade to clean up all this old gasket. So you can see there's still some left and a lot of it probably will peel for the most part, it looks like. But I'm just gonna use a razor blade and I'm not gonna gouge. I'm gonna be careful not to gouge anything. We're just going to clean this off a little bit at a time until we have a good new mating surface for our replacement. Now, um, GM uses a gasket here, 
And while my new rear end cover, which you guys will see here in a minute, it comes with a gasket, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use silicone. And the reason being is because I know that it's not gonna leak, uh, or at least I've never had it leak in the past. And so that is what I'm going to be using. So I'm gonna go grab the razor blade, get some brake clean on this, get it all cleaned up, and then we will go back together and you guys will get to see the new diff cover, which I'm really excited about. It looks really, really nice. I've got all this cleaned off and uh, scraped it really well, cleaned it with some brake clean, and we are ready to put the new cover on. So what I bought is a TA cover, and um, I believe they're actually made by Mosier, is who makes these, but um, I've used these in the past on other cars, and to me, guys, they just look really good and uh, they offer some additional support. You can see how thick this thing is, and I'll also list this down in the description, but the downside is it comes with a standard bolt, and these are metric, so you're gonna have to source some old uh, new bolts because your old ones are too short. Uh, obviously, they won't set in that channel. They're kind of counterboard, so it won't set in there, and if even if it did, it wouldn't be long enough. So I will list down below what you need. I had to go get some bolts, and uh, they also come with washers and it sets in there and looks really nice. I was hoping I could find some stainless, but even with the black, I think it's gonna look really, really nice. So now I'm ready to put this on. As I said, it did come with a gasket. You can see here in the bottom, there is a gasket. I am not going to be using that because I'm going to use silicone. So just using some Perma Permatex um, gasket maker. And like I said, guys, I've had really good luck with this in the past and I use it on everything that I put back together, uh, you know, with the except I'm not putting a head gasket, I'm not replacing a head gasket with it, but uh, for rear ends, it seems to work really well. It just seems like these paper or cork style gaskets just wear out over time and it leaks and I don't even wanna go through that. It's really, really easy to do this while you're out from under the truck, but when you're under the truck, it's just a lot more cumbersome. So I'm gonna run a bead uh, around this entire thing and I'm gonna go around the bolt holes. Now I know there was some controversy in one of the videos I did when I changed the fluid in the G80 differential, they said you didn't know, need to go around the bolt holes uh, because there's nowhere for it to leak up here, but uh, I do it anyway. So that's up to you guys whether you wanna do that or not. Uh, it's just a preference of mine to go around them. It's not a big deal. If not, if you don't go around them, I would go up to them as close as possible and then kind of circle them. The other thing is you, while you're putting this on, you do need to back off these supports and um, which I'm going to be doing you don't want to smash or ruin the cover while you're putting it in so you need to back those off all the way and then we'll talk about the process of tightening those up and uh, the torque specs and all of that the other thing while I put these in I am going to put just a dab of blue Loctite on them um, nothing crazy just a little bitty dab of it so uh, the next step that you guys will see well I'll have this on and then we'll talk about um, well, I may just go ahead and start replacing the brakes. Not a whole lot to that, but we'll talk about the torque specs on this next. As you can see, I went ahead and put the silicone all the way around. A nice bead of silicone or gasket maker, whatever you want to call it. So now I did go ahead and clear this off. Just make sure that you put the drain on the bottom. Obviously, there's writing on the other side. It would be upside down if you didn't, but uh, just be careful. The other thing I did was I backed these back. Um, so we're not anywhere close to putting it on and smashing the caps or any issues with the cover So now we're ready to put it on like I said I am going to be using a little bit of blue Loctite and I went ahead and put my washers on to kind of speed up the process now It did come with a bigger spacer. I'm gonna use that at the top where your brake line uh, holder bolts on so I'm ready to go together once you have all the bolts in and it's set on there, all we need to do is torque them down to 25 foot pounds. And then we'll talk about how we're gonna set these bearing caps. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna push, you're gonna actually twist these in by hand, not the nut, but the inner piece until you feel it stop. Once it stops, you need to torque that to 60 inch pounds, and then you need to torque this jam nut to 20 foot pounds and then we will be finished guys and I'm probably gonna wait to put fluid in it until it's in the truck and the reason why is I'm gonna give this silicone time to dry so the next step will be it actually going back in the truck so at this point guys I have all the brakes swapped over brake lines the dual piston calipers like I put on the truck before I swapped all that stuff over I swapped the old stuff back over to that other axle and actually put it back in the truck so it's still 
you can still move it around. So for a couple of days, I haven't haven't been able to move that. And you know, to me, it's easier to move to mow and stuff like that if it has a rear end in it. So I did go ahead and put that in. So I'm pretty much tired for the day. But I did have to switch a couple things, as you probably noticed, my shock extensions that were on the other rear end, and then there is a bracket here for your e-brake line. Other than that, uh, just the brakes. And so at this point, we're ready to put it back in. Now it's a little harder on these because you're not bolting it to the bottom. Uh, just like I talked about before, you actually had to put it on top of the leaf spring. So it does make it a little more challenging to put in, but still not bad. Once I finish this up, so once I put everything back into place, we'll talk about the connections that you need to make. And we'll also talk about the torque specs. Now I know they're in my video when I lowered it, but I'll go over them again, just in case you guys don't know. The very first thing I did was get it up on some jack stands. So I slid it under on the jack here lifted it up a little bit in order to get the jack stands and once you get that um, underneath you it kind of teeter totters on the jack so you're able to lift one side up a little bit and then just go back and forth until you get it to the height you want so i'm going to hook the shocks up first and then once i get the shocks hooked up i'll go ahead and swing the uh, leaf springs up into their pockets as you can see i went ahead and put the bolt in i will tell you guys sometimes these pockets they um they bend when you tighten that up so you may have to take something and just bend the outer ledge out just a hair in order to get that back in the pocket. That's a common issue. So if yours is bent, you may have to move it a little bit. Just put a set of vice grips on the top side and just bend that ear out just a hair, not a ton. Uh, and then you'll be able to get your uh, shackle back in its place. The other thing I did is I went ahead and loosely put the bolt in on the shocks, like I said. But now I'm going to go ahead and put the saddle back under. Um, that is for the flip kit and then I'm gonna go ahead and put the airbag obviously mount if you have that um, I'm gonna go ahead and mount that back into place and then we should be able to put the u-bolts on and the bottom plate and I'm just gonna loosely snug all this stuff up and we'll torque it all at the end once I do that then uh, we will have to put our brake line back up underneath here uh, you can kind of see where it hooks on here with those two 13s that's the bracket that holds it I'm going to go ahead and put that into place and uh, I guess the next step you guys will see uh, I'm going to have my wife come out and help me bleed the brakes because obviously we unhooked the line so we're going to need to bleed those but I'll put the tires and wheels back on so the next step you guys will see I'll talk about the torque specs on everything we need and then we still have to fill the rear end up. I now have the, the all the wheels and tires on all the bolts in I went ahead and put the drive shaft in so the 11 millimeters down underneath here but there's one thing I want to talk about. So if you guys have issues getting the e-brake lines, these guys here on or off of the rear end, the easiest way to do that is loosen this 13 millimeter right here all the way back until you can get these two lines out. Once you get those lines out, you can pull slack back there on that spring and uh, pop the tabs loose like we did on the other truck up here. Actually, where are they at? Oh, they're right here. Um, you can knock those tabs loose, pull the line out. But I wanted to talk about that because that was kind of a uh, pain point when I was taking this all apart, is getting those loose. But at this point, we are ready to get underneath this thing and put some fluid in it. And the fluid that I'm going to be using is synthetic gear oil from Lucas. Now, I use this in my 52 Chevy when I did my rear end swap in it. And uh, I just really like this stuff. To be honest with you guys, I like to use synthetic whenever possible. And uh, on these G80 rear ends, they do not require any friction additive. So you do not have to worry about putting any friction modifier in there. Uh, a lot of rear ends do require that. This is one that does not. So I'm gonna pop the top off this. I got three, it's supposed to take a little over two. We will see. Once I get under there, we'll talk about how we're gonna tell when it's full and uh, where we're gonna fill it and all of that. At this point, ready to put the fluid in. And uh, there's a couple different options to fill it now because the new rear cover here has a fill plug in it, but because it's standard, I actually do not have that tool. So we're going to fill it in the factory location, which is right here. And all you need guys in order to do that is an extension on a 3 8 drive ratchet that will fit in the center of that. Now, once you take that out, it is important that you measure um, about one inch from that the bottom of that fill plug. So what I'm using is an Allen key. And uh, once I see fluid on the very bottom of that, uh, I should be good as far as filling it with fluid. You don't want to overfill it. That would be bad. Then you're going to screw up the seals in the front of this. And um, it's just not a good idea. You're going to have it pushing out in other places. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this up, 
tighten that back up and uh, we should be good to set it down on the ground or on some blocks so we can torque all this stuff down. So as you can see, it is down on the ground and actually guys, with, my, with air in my airbags, I'm able to get under here and tighten everything because it doesn't have the spare tire in it. So I did go ahead and put the fill plug back in. What I did guys is when it was just on the edge of that, I measured, I got a Allen key that was about one inch. When it was just about to the end of that, uh, it was actually a little bit over. That's when I stopped filling. You want to go uh, a little bit between a half an inch and an inch and a half. So that's about right at an inch. You want to go uh, below the fill hole. So that's what I did. And I went ahead and set it down so I could get an accurate measurement before I did that. So we are all good there. Everything is snug down, but I do have to torque it. So the bottom of the shocks go to 70 foot pounds. The top, uh, the top and the bottom of the shackle back here go to 70 foot pounds. The actual um, U-bolts there, the nut on the bottom of that goes to 53. And then I did loosen the very front of the leaf spring and that goes to 110. So that is all I have to do is just torque all that stuff down. Uh, obviously we'll do it on both sides. Once we're finished with that, maybe we'll pull it out and take a look at it. Um, or I might even take it down the road to make sure we don't have any issues. Now, I did drive this truck and didn't have any issues with this rear end before. So I don't anticipate having any problems, but um, it's still nice to test it after you get done as far as the brakes and everything, make sure they're good. And they seem to be as well, but uh, we'll at least pull it out and I'll uh, give my final thoughts on kind of what this project entailed and um, you know how long it probably would take a person. So we're back from a drive now guys it's been a couple days and i haven't had a chance to wash this or drive it or anything i couldn't do it when i finished it up so uh i've been waiting i just got through taking it down the road there are zero noises um no weird sounds the brakes work great everything is working like it should no leaks whatsoever and i'm happy i think it looks a lot better i think that that ta uh cover that rear diff cover is going to strengthen things up quite a bit can't really see i guess you can see it man it looks so much nicer down there anyway i know i took a lot of time to do uh prep in the rear end and painting it but to me if you're going to swap that over that's why a lot of my stuff takes a lot longer than normal and um why you don't see me just feeding out video after video after video is because guys this was like a five-day project just after like after I got off work, I work on a little bit each night as far as painting it, stripping it and whatnot. So it's not something I can just throw together and put in in one day, make a quick video and go on. So the videos are getting more strenuous. I know you guys are wanting to see some more on the Tahoe, the motor swap and stuff, but that's stuff that I'm just gonna have to gradually chip away at. I'll get there, I promise you. Same way with the Trans Am. It's stuff that I'm just gonna chip away at a little bit at a time. But all in all, like I said, no noises. I'm really happy with it. One of these rear ends can be obtained for no, I think the going rate in my area, and this is Southwest Missouri, you're talking like 350 bucks probably used. Now, um, this, I will say it is a little more peppy. It doesn't have enough power to turn the tires over. Otherwise I'd do a big, huge burnout out here for you guys, but it just doesn't have that power in it with the six cylinder, but it does take off a lot quicker. So that 373 definitely made a difference coming out. Uh, it had 342s, we went to a 373. I can definitely tell a difference as far as takeoff. Uh, I didn't take it really far, probably 60 miles an hour, just listening for noises and whatnot. I didn't hear any noises when I drove it home, so I thought we were good, but it's always good to make sure. I also checked the fluid one more time just to make sure we were good there. Everything is solid, guys. And like always, I will list the stuff that I use down in the description below, but it's coming together. And that's one of the first things I wanted to do before I got the V8 in it. I didn't want to put the V8 in, have a single tire fire truck, get out here to do a burnout for you guys, and it did nothing. And I will definitely do a burnout for you guys once we get the V8 in it, and that is getting closer and closer. But um, let me know if you guys like this video. Like I said, it's probably one of those things, if you guys are looking for one of these rear ends, if you go to a salvage yard and you don't know what you're looking for, there is a sticker in the glove box. And in that sticker, GT4 will be a 373 rear end. And um, what is the, oh, G80 is a locking diff. Now I know that G80 is not the strongest. That's another reason why I added that TA cover but it will do for what I'm doing. I'm not making a drag track out of this. We're not gonna put any slicks on it and launch it. Well, yet. We're not gonna do that yet. Maybe down the road we'll do something like that. But guys, if you did like this video, like I said, please go down, smash that thumbs up button. If you are not subscribed, guys, go down, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you ring that bell icon. That makes sure you're notified every time we drop a new video and we'll stay tuned to see this thing get a V8.